Dr. Sage here, back with the second of three videos on the cell cycle, meiosis, and genetic variation. In this video, we're going to talk about the process of meiosis. One of the things you need to get out of this video is what are the differences between mitosis and meiosis? And frankly, the easiest way to learn the process of meiosis is learn the process of mitosis, which I taught you in the last set of video lectures and then learn what's different about meiosis. If you understand how mitosis works and then understand how meiosis is different from mitosis, then you know how they both work. So a lot of the things that happen in meiosis, similar things are happening in mitosis. And I'm gonna point those out and then point out the main differences between them. So to begin, before you started mitosis, I said you have interphase, including S phase of interphase. And during S phase, you double the amount of DNA. You go from unduplicated chromosomes to duplicated chromosomes. Well, the same is true for meiosis. Before you start meiosis, you have S phase of interphase. So you go from unduplicated chromosomes to duplicated chromosomes made up of two sister chromatids. Then you're gonna do meiosis. Now, one thing that's different about meiosis is with meiosis, you do cell division twice. So for mitosis, you start with one cell, you do cell division and end up with two cells. For meiosis, you start with one cell and you do meiosis one, which will give you two cells, and then you do meiosis two, you divide again, and those two cells will turn into four cells. So we go through two rounds of cell division, starting with meiosis one. Now something that's different between mitosis and meiosis is during meiosis one, you do not separate the sister chromatids. The sister chromatids stay attached to each other. Instead, what you do is you separate the homologous chromosomes. So we have, let's say, chromosome one that you got from your mom, chromosome one you got from your dad. By the end of meiosis one, what happens is these two homologous chromosomes end up in two different cells. However, they're still made up of two sister chromatids. They're still duplicated chromosomes. So then you have to do meiosis two. During meiosis two, now you take the sister chromatids, pull them apart, and move those daughter chromosomes to two opposite sides of the cell so the cell can split into two separate cells. So at the end of meiosis two, you end up having four cells. And these cells are now haploid cells. They have one of each type of chromosome. Note up here, the cell you started with had two copies of, let's say this is chromosome 1. Two copies of that chromosome 1. Well, now each cell only has one copy of that chromosome 1. So you went from a diploid cell to four haploid cells. And these haploid cells are the gametes, either sperm cells or egg cells. So in more detail, meiosis goes through two rounds of cell division. First you do meiosis 1, then you do meiosis 2. Now, we learned mitosis is made up of subphases, five subphases, prophase, prometaphase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. Well, meiosis is also made up of subphases and they're the same names. So that's why once you learn mitosis, it's much easier to understand meiosis. They're the same names, except one of them is missing. So you do meiosis one, and in meiosis one, you have prophase one, metaphase one, anaphase one, telophase one. Okay, then you do meiosis 2, and in meiosis 2, exact same names, just with a 2. So you got prophase 2, metaphase 2, anaphase 2, telophase 2. So if you notice, the one that's missing is the one that's kind of a combination of two names. So in mitosis, you have prometaphase. Okay, so that stage is missing in meiosis. Or in figure form, for meiosis, you start out with one cell, and you start by doing meiosis 1. Meiosis 1 is made up of prophase 1, metaphase 1, anaphase 1, telophase 1, and then cytokinesis, which will split the cell into two cells. Then you do meiosis 2. You take those two cells. You do prophase 2, metaphase 2, anaphase 2, telophase 2, and cytokinesis, which will split these cells into four cells. Okay, so that's kind of the big picture of meiosis. And I know you can't read the details in this figure. That's fine. I'm going to go through it step by step. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start with meiosis one. So meiosis one is made up of prophase one, metaphase one, anaphase one, telophase one. So the first stage is prophase one. 
Now, one difference between mitosis and meiosis is prophase one of meiosis one takes a long time. Okay, it take up to 90% of the time required for meiosis. And in fact, sometimes it could take an exceedingly long time, like decades for prophase one to last. Remember what we're making here is we're making the gametes, the sperm cells and the egg cells. Well, for example, the egg cells, biological females are born with all of their egg cells they're gonna have for their entire life. Those cells are paused in prophase one. And they stay paused in prophase one for decades. And then they start going through the rest of this cell cycle. They go start going through the rest of meiosis one at a time, once per month. And that creates a monthly cycle. And then that can last for decades again until the monthly cycle stops. Okay, so what this means is it stays paused in prophase one for an exceedingly long time. Okay, so prophase one, what's happening? Well, some things are happening that are the same as prophase of mitosis. Chromosomes are condensing, just like chromosomes are condensing in prophase of mitosis. Centrosomes are moving away from each other, just like centrosomes are moving away from each other during prophase of mitosis. But there are some differences, some important differences. In fact, there's something that happens during meiosis one that does not happen at all in mitosis, and it doesn't happen in meiosis two, which is synapsis. Synapsis is where the homologous chromosomes line up side by side. So let's say chromosome one that came from dad, chromosome one that came from mom, they're lined up side by side. Two from mom, two from dad. Uh, three from dad, three from mom, they're lined up side by side. That's called synapsis. That doesn't happen in mitosis. Now, because the chromosomes are synapsed, because they're lined up side by side, like something can happen that can't happen in mitosis or in meiosis too, which is called crossing over. So as the chromosomes, the homologous chromosomes, chromosome one that came from mom, chromosome one that came from dad, are lined up side by side. What happens is the tips of these chromosomes can lay across each other, creating this little X shape here called a chiasmata. Where they're laying across each other, they can actually break and then trade places. Okay, so what that means is, instead of having an all blue chromosome, you have a blue chromosome with some red on it. Or instead of an all red chromosome, you have a red chromosome with some blue on it. So what's happening is you're exchanging the tips of these chromosomes. Now that's important because that's one of the things that greatly increases genetic variation due to sexual reproduction. Remember, these homologous chromosomes, the reason they're homologous chromosomes is because they have the same sets of genes on them. But recall, there's different versions of genes. For example, let's say, and I'm completely making this up, but let's say that the eye color gene is right here um, on this chromosome. And let's say that the hair color gene is right here on this chromosome. And let's say that your mom passed on to you um, brown hair and brown eyes, and your dad passed on to you blonde hair and blue eyes. Okay, well, what's going to happen is if crossing over did not happen, that you can only pass on either brown hair with brown eyes to your kids or blonde hair with blue eyes to your kids. But if a crossover happens to happen between these two genes, what can happen is you can pass on brown hair with blue eyes. And you can pass on blonde hair with brown eyes. So what you're doing is you're taking the two different versions of the gene, two different alleles you got from your parents, and you're mixing them up before you pass them on to your kids. Okay, so that's what crossing over is. Crossing over only happens in meiosis one. Doesn't happen in mitosis or meiosis two. Another thing to note, when these homologous chromosomes are synapsed, when they're lined up side by side but like this, that shape is called a tetrad. Um, it helps you to remember it, although a lot of you are probably too young to have played this, but that game Tetris, have you ever played Tetris? Okay, if you've never noticed, uh, all the pieces in Tetris are all made out of four squares. That's why it's called Tetris. That prefix tetra means four. Tetris, every piece is made out of four squares. Tetrad, there's four chromatids here. They're lined up side by side. Okay, so that's why it's called a tetra. After prophase one, then you have metaphase one. Now remember, in metaphase of mitosis, chromosomes line up down the middle of the cell. Okay, well, metaphase one of meiosis one, chromosomes also line up down the middle of the cell, but they line up as homologous pairs. 
chromosome one and the other chromosome one. Two and two, three and three are lined up down the middle of the cell. That does not happen in mitosis or in meiosis two. Now, because they're lined up as homologous pairs, when the kinetochore microtubules attach to the chromosomes, they do not attach to the two different sister chromatids. Instead, they attach to the two different homologous chromosomes. Because of that, in the next stage, anaphase one, again, something happens that only happens in meiosis one, not mitosis or meiosis two, which is you do not separate the sister chromatids. Instead, you separate the homologous chromosomes. So one chromosome one is going over here, the other chromosome one is going over here. Okay, so separation of the homologous chromosomes only happens during anaphase one of meiosis one. Then you have telophase one of meiosis one, which frankly is the same thing as telophase of mitosis. Chromosomes are at the opposite ends of the cell. Chromosomes begin to decondense. You start to reform the nuclear envelope. Cytokinesis is beginning. So if you already learned telophase of mitosis, you know telophase one of meiosis one. Okay, so that is a process of meiosis one. Note that before meiosis one started, you do have interphase, including S phase. You duplicate the DNA. Now between meiosis one and meiosis two, remember you're doing telophase and cytokinesis. So after cytokinesis, what should come next is again interphase. So there is a brief interphase between meiosis one and meiosis two, but of note that interphase does not have an S phase. So what that means is the chromosomes do not duplicate between meiosis one and meiosis two. The chromosomes only duplicate before meiosis one starts. And that brief interphase is called interkinesis to let you know that it's a special type of interphase it does not have an s phase okay so after you do telophase cytokinesis interkinesis then you start meiosis 2. now meiosis 2 is very similar to mitosis in fact if you've learned mitosis you basically already know meiosis 2. so prophase of mitosis and prophase 2 of meiosis 2 chromosomes are condensing centrosomes are moving away from each other you're getting rid of the nuclear envelope Metaphase of mitosis and metaphase 2 of meiosis 2, chromosomes line up singularly down the middle of the cell. Anaphase of mitosis and anaphase 2 of meiosis 2, you separate the sister chromatids and move those daughter chromosomes to two opposite sides of the cell. Telophase of mitosis and telophase 2 of meiosis 2, chromosomes are two opposite ends of the cell, chromosomes begin to decondense. You start to reform the nuclear envelope to make two nuclei and cytokinesis is beginning. In other words, if you know mitosis, you already know meiosis too. The difference between them is the chromosomes they start with. Mitosis starts with duplicated diploid cells. Meiosis too starts with duplicated haploid cells. There's only one chromosome one in the cell because the other chromosome one is over here. There's only one chromosome two in the cell because the other chromosome two is over here. So they're haploid cells. Mitosis, you end up with two cells that are diploid. Meiosis two, you end up with four cells that are haploid. So at the end of meiosis two, you do cytokinesis. You end up with four daughter cells, each that are unduplicated haploid cells. These are the gametes, either sperm cells or egg cells. And these daughter cells are genetically distinct from each other and the parent cells. They are not clones of each other, like you get with mitosis. They are different from each other. For one reason, they're different from the parent cells because they have half as many chromosomes. Another reason they're different is because you've mixed up the versions of the genes, the alleles, for example, through crossing over. Learn mitosis, then learn what's different about meiosis, and then you'll understand both of them. So mitosis conserves a number of chromosome sets, producing cells that are genetically identical to the parent cell. Meiosis reduces the number of chromosome sets from two of each type of chromosome, diploid cells, to one of each type of chromosome, haploid cells, producing cells that are genetically different from each other and from the parent cell. To recap again, the differences between mitosis and meiosis. Whether you are starting mitosis, which is used for somatic cells, or meiosis, which is used for gametes and humans, either way, you're gonna have interphase, including S phase. So you're gonna duplicate the DNA during S phase of interphase for both of them. Then, some differences. Something only happens in meiosis 1 that does not happen in mitosis or meiosis 2, and that's synapsis of the homologous chromosomes. They line up side by side. Because those chromosomes are synapsed, they can cross over, 
which again only happens in meiosis 1, not in mitosis or meiosis 2. Another difference, during metaphase of mitosis, the chromosomes line up singularly down the middle of the cell. Well, during metaphase 1 of meiosis 1, they line up down the middle of the cell, but as homologous pairs. Okay. During anaphase of mitosis, you pull apart the sister chromatids. During anaphase 1 of meiosis 1, you separate homologous chromosomes. Okay. So during meiosis 2, that's when the chromosomes line up singularly down the middle of the cell during metaphase 2 of meiosis 2, just like they do during metaphase of mitosis. During meiosis 2, in particular during anaphase 2 of meiosis 2, that's when you separate sister chromatids, just like you separate sister chromatids during anaphase of mitosis. Meiosis ends up with four cells, which are haploid, and they are gametes, either sperm or egg cells. Mitosis ends up with two cells, which are diploid, and these are somatic cells. Everything in your body except for the gametes. Okay, so yet again, one more time, the main differences between mitosis and meiosis happen in meiosis 1. Synapsis and crossing over happen in prophase 1 of meiosis 1, doesn't happen in mitosis or meiosis 2. At the metaphase plate, they're lined up as homologous chromosomes. They're paired up as tetrads instead of as singular chromosomes. During anaphase 1 of meiosis 1, you separate the homologous chromosomes, not the sister chromatids. Okay, and that was meiosis which we went through it very quickly, but for one reason, because if you've already learned mitosis, which you should have already learned, then you already understand a lot of the details about meiosis. So learn mitosis, learn what's different about meiosis, then you should understand both of them. In the next video in this lecture series, we're gonna learn about genetic variation and how you get it through the process of sexual reproduction. Until then, this has been Dr. Sage.